Welcome to Starkey Soundbites. I'm Dave Fabry, Starkey's Chief Innovation Officer and your host. Today we're talking about the need for constant improvement and growth and uh, refusing ordinary to really strive for something exceptional. And I can't think of anybody I'd rather have on to talk about this than Nate Johnson. Nate is our Director of Product Management here at Starkey and he's, he and his team are responsible for the product roadmap, really, and we'll talk a little bit about what that means, but really, it touches every part of the organization, including people working on hardware and the form factors, whether it's a custom or in the ear style, I mean, or, or behind the ear and Rick style, whether it's the programming software or whether it's the user applications, which increasingly patients are using that user app as an interface to our products. And, you know, Nate, I think one thing that I think of when I think of you is unflappable. And I think that's a, a characteristic a good product manager has to have because there's all kinds of commotion. You're on, on, on very critical timelines and they change and we have to adapt and look at that constant improvement. And I think of you as being unflappable flappable. And so it's a pleasure to have you here today on the podcast. Thanks a lot, Dave. It's, it's, it's really great to be here. And I appreciate the, uh, the quick compliment as we get into the, get into the weeds here. So excited to be on the podcast and talk about what we do at Starkey and how we make our, uh, our hearing aids. Yeah, this is your first podcast you were saying. So yeah, it is. It's a so, privilege to have have us and Soundbites host you for your first time on. Absolutely. So. Excited to get into the conversation with you and really talk through, like I said, our, our uh, physical hardware products, our mobile applications, mm -hmm. our fitting software, and talk about we our, our, how we on my team in product management really bring in voice of the customer, whether we're talking about customer being our hearing care professional, exactly. or whether we're talking about customer being the actual hearing aid user. So on the product management team, we definitely are, are very focused on bringing both of those viewpoints into our products and ensuring that the products that we push out into the field are well accepted by professionals and patients. I think you hit on a very important point. I mean, you say design by professionals for professionals. And a friend of mine, Mike Maddock, will often say, you can't read the label when you're inside the jar. And although we may fall in love with a product or technology or application, we want to make sure, and, and that's one of the things that you're responsible ultimately for, to do a gut check with professionals to see if indeed this is something they're looking for. But then that's not it either, because then when we talk about the user app and the way the patient interfaces, yeah. we want to make sure that the patients find this beneficial. So the voice of the customer in your case can mean both the hearing care professional and ultimately the end user. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point, Dave. So, uh, Interestingly enough, I, I'm an engineer by trade, and your your point on uh, not getting too enamored on, of the technology definitely strikes home. So, you know, there's as as an engineer, I can tend to think that a piece of of tech that's future future looking and, and out there is really cool. But at the end of the day, my job and my team's job is to make sure that that technology that we're bringing into the hearing aid has actual tangible value. It's making our professionals' lives easier. It's making our hearing aids better for that end user. Well, so let's start there in terms of it can, it can be difficult. It can be challenging. Yeah. It can certainly be humbling to ask for feedback from end users or from professionals uh, because hopefully, I mean, you know, everyone likes to get compliments. <laughs> and, and we've been getting a lot of very Absolutely. favorable compliments about Genesis, which was launched just in February. Now, here we are six months later, and we're already updating that product. And we'll yep. get into that a little bit more. But, you know, we've heard a lot of great things from the market, from hearing care professionals and end users about how their lives have been impacted in a positive way by this technology. But we also, I'll admit, you know, I don't learn as much from compliments mm -hmm. as I do from complaints. Fortunately, I get a lot more complaints <laughs> than I do compliments. But, but you know, it, that can be a humbling experience. Yeah. Explain how you go about that process of getting feedback from professionals and end users. Yeah, absolutely, Dave. So there's really a, a few primary ways that that my team does that. So one, which is a, a, a very important part, and I, I know you actually have this as well, is something that we call at Starkey advisory boards. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, for our Genesis product launch, had a very in-depth advisory board. So we had hearing care professionals working with us on the, on the front end of the ideation process. So really early on in development, we're targeting 
uh, areas of, of the product, the fitting software especially, that is going to make it easy for them, yeah. efficient for them, make sure that they're able to provide the best service to that end user. Uh, another, another aspect that we use very frequently and, and probably is more on the complaint side of it that, <laughs> that you mentioned is we have this internal tool which we call product suggestions. So it's a, it's a Microsoft dashboard mm -hmm. that uh, the sales reps can get feedback from the field, from a provider. You know, it's, I don't like X, Y, and Z. I wish you guys had this. Why don't you, why don't you do this like this? And that our, this, this tool, when, it's, when the, the uh, sales rep enters it, is automatically filtered. My team can go in and look. Okay, we had this week. We had ten suggestions regarding this, you know, aspect of our of our hearing aid. Mm -hmm. And what that does is, you know, as, as you know very well, Dave, these hearing aids are on a, you know, an eighteen, sometimes even twenty four month rolling development cycle. Yeah. So something that we're working on right now might not hit the market until twenty twenty six. Yeah. So it's important that we get that feedback. And, and iterate on it rapidly to, to make that big impact to the field. So those are, those are two areas that are, that are really, uh, really important from a professional standpoint. But the one that I, I like to fall back on, kind of the tried and true, is just really going out, and cl going out into clinics, talking yeah. to hearing care uh, pro professionals. And you know, they're out there doing it every day. They're interacting with your products. They're interacting with other manufacturers' products. And there's just nothing that works as well is getting into the clinic and you, you can talk to the professional, you can talk to the patient at the, at the same time. And it's, it's, um, amazing the, the insights that you gain from, from doing that. Yeah. And I know you, one of the things that really impresses me about you in this role is you've been very deliberate and determined to spend time with clinicians permissions in their office, often engaging with them directly, or even the ultimate privilege is if they allow you to mm -hmm. witness the fittings and the engagement that they're going through fitting our products on patients. And, and that really is a partnership that we value and treasure totally. for those clinicians who will do that for us. Because I know as an audiologist, uh, in my role as chief innovation officer, which I say I look out the window and think deep thoughts, <laughs> the other thing is, is I do have a patient advisory council uh, that I work with, with the understanding mm -hmm. that... Um, uh, I have a lot of things on my plate, like all of us do, yep. but, but seeing patients is the best way to get that immediate totally. feedback. And, um, and I expect them to give me brutal, to be brutal right. in their candor. Right. And, um, and so, I, you know, I really appreciate that you have made that attempt yep. to go out as often as possible into the wild, mm -hmm. into the real world for those patients. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's, that's what, that's what's been in, in my experience, especially, you know, coming out of the engineering side of the organization, yeah. not having that, that clinical background that you yourself has uh, to, that's, that's really been the most eye-opening for me. Yeah. And, and you mentioned the focus groups that really began um, with Genesis and the establishment of Profit. You know, a lot of people really liked Inspire and they were mm -hmm. worried mm -hmm. about us um, uh, taking away something that they've been very comfortable right. with. But there were... Uh, very candid discussions that yep. came apart came about as a part of those focus groups that led to some things that we'll get to in a minute uh, in terms of in innovations mm -hmm. that might not have uh, just naturally right. occurred if we hadn't been engaged and you hadn't been leading these discussions with clinicians who are fitting our products every day. Yeah, absolutely. So my my team did a did a fantastic job of that. So working directly with. Uh, different customers too, so not mm -hmm. just uh, not just one mm -hmm. specific customer segment, but maybe it's a VA audiologist, maybe it's a it's a person who buys a lot of Starkey products, maybe it's a person who doesn't buy that many Starkey products, and doing those focused interviews early on in the process mm -hmm. and, and walking through early screens before there was even any software, and it's just you know it's just visuals on the on the on the com computer screen. Those mm -hmm. are excellent tools for us to get feedback on the user experience. And help us design the software to again, you know, efficiency and, and accuracy. Those are the two things that we're really striving for there. Yeah, let's let's highlight a couple back thinking back to February in Genesis. I mean, I can tell you for me, 
as much as I did um, mm-hmm. really uh, find Inspire to be an intuitive and logical way to program instruments, one of the pain points for me personally was that if I had RIC devices that were stock units and I wanted to pull them off, mm-hmm. uh, they were all labeled as left ear devices. Yep. And then I had to, uh, with my aging eyes, increasingly sort out which one was the left and which one right. was the right, and I put the power of the receiver on. Talk a little bit about what went into uh, the enhancements that we introduced with Genesis A. I related to that part of yeah, the process. Yeah, for sure, Dave. So the the big thing there was we uh, upgraded our receiver cable. So we went from a from a SnapFit 1.0 to a SnapFit 2.0. Pretty innocuous number change, right? But under the hood, there there's a lot of a lot of new technology happening. So the we've added smarts to the receiver. So it knows that hey, I'm a I'm a M size three. Or I'm a P size you said four. M. That used to be a 50, 50 gain, right? Exactly, okay. yeah. So we, that was another yep, improvement that, was, that, that we made. That was another improvement, exactly. Yeah. So we want to we wanna focus on the more broad fitting range of mm-hmm. the receiver versus just a specific full-on gain number there. But yeah, the adding in that, that technology, so not only does the receiver know what it is, the fitting software, the, the ProFit fitting software, as soon as you connect that receiver... It, it highlights that up on your screen. So as a professional, it's very easy for you to, yeah. to know, okay, yep, this is the this is the right aid, this is the left aid. Streamline that process Absolutely. like beyond, you know, my expectation. We we were successful in sort of snapping it on. It identifies left, right, the power as you say, and then I'm good to go in, totally. in the in the pre-fitting part of this. And I think that's just one example, and that came through loud and clear from a number oh, of the other professionals absolutely. That was, early on. That was very, very loud feedback from, <laughs> from a lot of different hearing care uh, pro- pro- professionals on what they didn't like yeah. about the Inspire system. So. Yeah, we'll come back to some of those other ones, but now let's talk about what people can expect. Like, like I said, your job is never done. When you're in charge of the roadmap and you're in, tar- in charge of always ensuring we're staying on the cutting edge, mm-hmm. not the bleeding edge of technology, so that as soon as you know you get ready to take a little sigh mm-hmm. of relief when Genesis AI was launched, you're already working on the six-month later right. update. So right. talk a little bit about what people can expect to see shortly out of this next generation. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's exactly it. We're the way that we look at it on the product side is our, our work is never done. So we're always striving to to iterate and to make new improvements to our technology. And, you know, Genesis, like you said, Dave, has been very well received by the field. But there are areas that, you know, we we knew going into it. Like, you can't build every hearing aid style at once. No. It's, it's just a, it's a, you know, resource bottleneck. So one of the things that we're super excited about is bringing in a couple of additional Zinc Air product styles to the Genesis family. So first being a RIC 312, mm-hmm. and then the second being a wireless Bluetooth streaming CIC 312. So both of those form factors uh, giving, giving providers and patients additional flexibility. You know, maybe they don't like rechargeable options for whatever reason. We want, we want the ability to give, or we want to give them the ability to have a Zinc Air and tried and true technology that's available to them in the amazing Genesis line as well. Yeah, so you mentioned the RIC 312. Now, will that be clo- will that uh, be a device that uses NFMI and a telecoil, or will it be closer to the MRIC rechargeable now? So it's actually a bit of a hybrid between okay. the two. So it does have NFMI, so mm-hmm. that being said, it'll support cross, uh, but it does not have a telecoil. So we're kind of riding in the middle, okay. you know, uh, if if you will, between the two different rechargeable options. Yeah, and we've been committed to ensuring in every form factor that, uh, as possible, uh, that clinicians will have a choice of telecoil for those who want yeah, it. Absolutely. But then also, we don't have to have every product right. duplicate or replicate others. Why? Why do clinicians uh, want a zinc air option rather than mm-hmm. rechargeable? Given that we've set the bar yep. uh, very high mm-hmm. for our competitors in terms of the Genesis mm-hmm. rechargeables with 51 hours out of the RT, 41 out of the micro RIC, and 42 out of the custom and, and uh, you know, the ITE and ITC right. models. Right. So, I mean, you, you I, I might actually flip the question around at, at some point and ask you that, but so the, the different I'll professionals... I'll the questions here. Yeah. <laughs> the different professionals that I've, that I've talked to on this... I would say there's two primary themes that come out. Mm-hmm. Um, one, it, it, again, it comes back to battery. Like you said, 
our our Genesis rechargeable products have unbelievable battery life, best in the industry. But there's you know there's certain use cases if you're a, if you're a very heavy cross user and if you as that user have been using the Zinc Air technology your your whole life, you might just be like you know what I know this works for me and this is what I want. At, at the end of the day, the user is the one buying the hearing aid. So as a as a professional and a provider, you can tell them the benefits of rechargeability all day long. But that specific person, they might just want that Zinc Air. So that's that's one. And then the other one, which is you know I'd say a little bit less common nowadays, given the the premium battery charger that we have, you know, mm-hmm. you can take your charger with you, go off the grid for a few days, still, you know, rest assured that you're going to have enough power to charge those hearing aids. But it is those patients that, you know, they have different times in their life where they're not, they don't have access to, to power. So yeah. it's, it's very easy for them to just buy a few sleeves of, of zinc air batteries. And, you know, I, they, they know that I can go wherever in the world I want. I can go for weeks at a time and my hearing aids are always going to be working. Yeah, I think very important points. The control one exactly. in that if someone is indeed, I think the cross by cross example is a great one because those are people that really depend on that technology. Mm-hmm. They need it to work and last all day, every day once yep. they start getting used to and depending on that right. technology. And then the other, I think, is is just that when they go off the grid and I think one of the other parts that hopefully we'll have a little uh, opportunity to talk about at the end is your role in terms of product management is not just for the U.S. market. Totally. Um, this summer, I had the opportunity to go and assist in the product launch in mm-hmm. South Africa, and they have load shedding, uh, and yeah. they have varying degrees of load shedding where the power just right. goes out because of the, the demands on their mm-hmm. grid, uh, and they'll just shut off a region for two hours, four right. hours, six right. hours, sometimes longer. And without that power... I think again, it's another mm-hmm. area where people feel like zinc air batteries. If they've done mm-hmm. worn them in that style for a long time, uh, they can control Absolutely. how long the battery life is and what they're doing. Or if they're hunters, or if they're right. going off the grid uh, camping, uh, and and without power, they want to be able to think about with confidence that they'll be able to continue to hear the sounds of nature. Yeah, hundred percent. And I'm actually real glad you brought up that international aspect. Yeah. So. This is, you know, the, the the Genesis launch has been, you know, primarily available to U.S. markets. Mm-hmm. One of the, I'll say, cornerstones of this upcoming launch is actually a lot of the behind-the-scenes work that goes into doing, to taking Genesis global. So if you think about all of the different hundreds of countries that Starkey operates in, mm-hmm. and you start to, to think of, of um, user manuals for hearing aids and chargers, the translations on the fitting software, the translations on the mobile app, the voice indicator translations that, you know, if you're hearing personal memory, to be able to say that in Spanish, which I'm not going to attempt here, <laughs> uh, in, in all the different languages that our hearing aids support, there's an immense amount of work that goes in to the behind the scenes side of it to make this uh, t- to make this and truly take this product global. You mentioned the, the receiver in the canal and the Zinc Air mm-hmm. uh, RICS um, and that that cross by cross capability. I, I, I don't want to let the CIC uh, with the sure. Zinc Air slide. It, one of the one of the issues that I've seen from working with patients who want the the cosmesis and the cosmetic mm-hmm. benefits of a small custom device like a CIC that is still connecting to their smartphone, connecting to accessories, and even ear to ear. This is no small technical challenge. The issue as well is with people who want that cosmetic benefit, but maybe use a more powerful receiver, an M or a P, if their ear canal allows it. And I've known from working with a lot of longtime CIC users, they're most comfortable, as long as they don't Mm -hmm. have dexterity issues or arthritis or visual issues that preclude them getting a battery in and out of their device, they want to control that as well because of the fact that rechargeable in those small packages in the past Mm -hmm. has sometimes pushed up against battery life on the rechargeable. No, totally. I mean, the the ear is the boss, as we Mm -hmm. like to say here at at Starkey. And I think that's the, the reality is when you start combining things like rechargeability, wireless, the, the Genesis circuit architecture, mm-hmm. all those things together, they just don't mesh with every year. Mm-hmm. So, you know, by being strategic and intentional in our product line uh, architecture, you know, we're saying for, for this, this uh, coming launch, the launching a CIC with that 312 form factor, but also bringing the benefit of 
uh, full streaming capabilities. Yeah. You know, you you mentioned the challenges that that we we have. You know, the, obviously the the human head and, and the human body just absorbing uh, that that uh, Bluetooth frequency mm-hmm. is it's it's a very challenging engineering problem that we have to solve here at at Starkey. But I'm pleased to say. We've 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 kind of nailed it. So we've really staked our reputation yep. on small custom devices Absolutely. fitting well, performing well. As you say, entering into the 2.4 gigahertz Bluetooth stage doesn't go through the head. We got to make it go around. It go around. Yep. And and the engineering challenge for that, as you know, mm-hmm. is not trivial. So uh, I know patients are going to be really pleased to have that option, yep. bringing that. Uh, um, form factor mm-hmm. and feature set into Absolutely. the Genesis world with this with yep. this uh, upcoming launch. Yeah, so let, let's touch on that a little bit. And actually, be, before we jump into the, the uh, some of the features, I, mm-hmm. I do want to mention with both of these products, the improvements in robustness and quality that we've made mm-hmm. on the Starkey engineering side. So, you know, similar in, in vain to, to Genesis, we, we, we can't quite say the same things about our Zinc Air products as we do with the rechargeable being waterproof, for example, because you know, there's a, there's a reason why these batteries are called zinc airs, right? They need air to, to function. So we can't seal that off like we can the rest of the, uh, rechargeable hearing aids, but everywhere on these hearing aids that can be sealed, it is sealed. Right. So the same conformal coding, nano coding, uh, the, 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 the mesh and all of the enhancements that we've Absolutely. talked about to, to deliver that IP68 rating on the rechargeable custom and standard products is there in this these products still applies but as you say zinc requires air to operate if we sealed them off completely they wouldn't work they wouldn't work um and then the other point the reality just the practical reality is is anytime you have a battery door that's swinging open there are mm-hmm. seams. Those are yep. ingress points that allow moisture to come in. Mm-hmm. But you say we've still achieved an IP68 rating mm-hmm. on the custom and standard zinc air products. It's not that beyond IP68 that we refer to when we're uh, discussing the rechargeable devices, Correct. but simply because you need air, you need air. and you have seams. Yep. Uh, but, but if someone jumps in the shower, uh, gets in the tub, uh, goes through a rainstorm, they still are going to have the confidence that these yep. devices will function um, after being uh, in a meter of water for 30, 30 minutes. minutes. At, totally. Absolutely. And I actually inadvertently torture tested one of them on a, <laughs> on a recent family uh, trip and, and dove in, in a, into a pool, came out quickly after I realized, mm-hmm. shook them off, and they, they functioned. So. Oh, I do it all the time, yeah. too. As you know, my <laughs> hearing aids go swimming right. quite regularly right. on purpose. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I just think that durability really goes hand in hand with uh, Genesis and being able to claim and achieve mm-hmm. that IP68 out of a zinc air battery um, is nothing short of remarkable. And I know a lot of work effort went into that. Yep. Yeah, it really is. So let's then transition a little bit into some of the features. Mm-hmm. Now, edge mode has been a feature dating back to 2020. In January of 2020, when we launched uh, Edge AI, yep. was the first derivation of edge mode. We improved it with Evolve to allow even more. And, and we saw from mm-hmm. uh, Michelle Hicks uh, and her team that patients increasingly are using edge mode in lieu of manual mm-hmm. programs um, and finding that they actually prefer overall the edge mode application plus the personal program, as we call it, that automated environmental classifier. What about edge mode plus in Genesis and now in this latest right. era? What, what improvements can they expect? Yeah, so obviously with, with, with Genesis, having the ability to control whether you want to control for comfort or speech clarity that was the that was the game changer for Genesis. Yep. So now with this launch, what we've done is further trained our DNN algorithms on tw- in twice as many scenarios with more data. Because that's the thing about DNN, like it's all about data. It's all about data the more and input da- and scenes. The more data scenes. that we can collect, the better the better we can train these these algos. And now where we are in this launch here is, like I said, it's it's been trained on twice as much as it was in Genesis. So we're able to make the the actual um, sound quality for the for the patient even better than it was in, in Genesis while utilizing those same settings that they really like. So whether they're trying to hear in comfort, you know, you have a selection for that. Whether you're trying to hear 
you know, speech in a, in a coffee shop, you have a, you have a selection for that. So we're, we're super excited to get this out in the field. So it's great to hear that we've continued to double down on DNN and using that onboard uh, DNN accelerator mm-hmm. in this case now too. Yep, absolutely. So that's a, that's a big feature of our Genesis neural processor, obviously, mm-hmm. is doing, taking some of that processing away from the cloud and doing it on board the hearing aid. So when you're able to do things on board, it's just, it's smarter, it's faster, all the above. Well, and it really is no accident that this mode began as edge mode, as edge yep. computing, yep. in the sense that for individuals who want to use the double tap, um, they don't even need to have their smartphone with them. Right. People may not realize that that edge computing, that edge mode in that sense, can all be done at the level of the mm-hmm. ear. Yeah, that, and I think on top of the different, you know, sound quality benefits that you just highlighted, to me, that's, that's one of my favorite things about this feature is it's, it's the quick double tap. Mm -hmm. And if you like it, awesome. If you want to revert back to your personal, it's, you're done. I like it. And, and within the app, we can set, we can set it. And even the end user, the, the hearing aid wearer Mm -hmm. can change to make it more or less sensitive from the default position. If they find that they're inadvertently bumping it in the summer, they're putting sunglasses on and taking them off. Um, all of that allows for that personalization. And then fail safe, they can still just use the app if they want. But Absolutely. the ability to just have everything on the ear and go about their day without always having to think about um, bringing their phone with them is a nice feature. And it truly is edge computing in that sense. It, it, it really is. And it, yeah, it, it just checks all the, bo- all the boxes for us at, at Starkey. One of the other areas going back to um, uh, Inspire uh, was with regards to the feedback cancelization, mm-hmm. feedback canceller initialization. Uh, that was a pain point for me sometimes because no matter what I did, I would I would tell the patient, okay, now I know you know you're going to hear a loud sound. Mm-hmm. It's going to be short. I don't want you to be you know I know you can hear it, so you don't need to say anything. And I prefer you didn't. Um, but then it, as soon as you know they'd sit and we'd go, mm-hmm. and and then they're like, oh, I heard that, or mm-hmm. you know it's loud. Have we made any improvements in yeah. that regard? Yeah, we actually have, Dave. So that was. That was a that was a, uh, a a great feature in this coming launch that we've modified. So we've modulated that noise where it it starts low at at a at a low decibel level, slowly ramps up and, and just doesn't rise to that level of uncomfortability that you mentioned there. Mm-hmm. And we're getting the same results yeah. from the feedback canceller. So you know, in this situation, we're we're helping the patient because they're not, you know, hearing that. Like you said, it's a it's a loud noise that can kind of jar you for for a second, and then we're helping the the hearing professional as well because they don't have to go through and explain like you just said. Right. Here's here's what you're gonna eat, here's what you're gonna hear. I know it it might be a little bit jarring, but uh, just don't worry about it. But I know some clinicians have actually in the past not used the initialization stimulus because of that reason and. With Genesis, there now is an important reason for them to always initialize the feedback stimulus. Why is that? Given the the um, variances that you see, you, especially you as a, a hearing care uh, pr- provider and, and professional, in the different vent sizes on earbuds, and even if it's a if it's a closed dome, we mm-hmm. know they're not perfectly closed. That's right. So those those vent uh, settings that that we get from running that feedback initialization are critical. Yeah. So every time you fit a new patient with Genesis devices, always use the feedback initialization. I think this will be a welcome adaptation to have that stimulus come on more gradually. Yep. And I would encourage people to always do it every time to take into consideration the fact that the slit leaks and the vents and mm-hmm. the dome tips or the custom one, um, that, that personalizing that is really important. Can you talk a little bit about some of the streaming updates that people yeah, can expect? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I'll say overall, this is this is an area on Genesis that we've gotten a lot of great feedback mm-hmm. uh, about streaming. So, the the uh, t- today when you're you know you're, when you're running through as a professional, you're able to give your patient a bass boost or a treble boost. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the feedback that we've heard is. Well, my patient really likes both of them. And the way that we're set up is you can't give them both. Right. So that's that's one of the exciting modifications that we're we're doing in this coming launch is if your patient likes likes the trebles, if they want it bumped up in the high, they want it bumped up in, in the low, you can you can do now do them both at the same time with an overall boost. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And very welcome because sound is personal. Totally. And being able to adjust that for bass or treble, even within the same individual for different applications yeah. is important. Um, we know, and as an iPhone user, I've really appreciated the two-way audio. 
on phone calls. Um, and yet one f bit of feedback that I sometimes get from my patients is that it works great. It's really a benefit for the person on the other end, but it works great for situations where it's a low ambient environment like we are now, or even a, a restaurant mm -hmm. that isn't overly crowded. But if it gets a little more boisterous, sometimes that two-way audio limits the audibility for the person that the hearing aid user is talking to on the other end. Right. Um, can you talk about enhancements that we've considered with regards to this? Yeah, 100%. So this is, this is an, again, another very exciting feature that's coming out in this launch. It's a feature update. So we're still using that same two-way audio. Your hearing aid microphones are transmitting your voice, streaming it to your cell phone, to your iPhone, and then, you know, obviously sending it out to the whoever you're talking to. Like you said, we, we have had some feedback where it's been challenging in directional situations or in uh, noisy situations. So what we've done on the engineering side is we're now using both of your hearing aid microphones. So it's in a, in a challenging background noise environment, you're able to actually parse out your own voice a lot better than you were with the original Genesis uh, software and, and, and firmware. And from there, we're doing that same thing, sending it to the phone. And we've heard very good feedback from the yeah. listener on the other end where, yeah, now they're able to hear you a lot clearer. When the hearing aid user is in a noisier environment, this will benefit the person listening on the other end of the phone. Absolutely. Terrific. Offline and airplane mode. Um, why why did we introduce that and explain that a little bit? Yeah, this is, this is an interesting one. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, have, we, and we, we have feedback, especially from our, our VA customers. Mm -hmm. They have, you know, veterans who maybe work in these sensitive um, they're sensitive workplaces. They're not able to have connectivity features on their phone and, and on their hearing aid. So what this feature does is you can, using a user control, so the, the hearing care professional can go and program in offline mode. You know, I do, a, I do a long press, say, I go into offline mode and my hearing aid shuts off all wireless communication until it's power cycled. Yeah. So what this does is it, it allows us to help those veterans still maintain the usage of their hearing aids. And it, it's, it's a very easy, um, it's a, it's a very easy thing to do where I go into my workplace, I turn it into offline mode. Uh, I, and, and I want to get out of it when I'm done with the day, you know, maybe I have my other user control, po uh, uh, have my other user control in a power off. Mm -hmm. I, I run that cycle and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm back online. I think that's a great feature, as you said, for travelers or for people working in sensitive work yep. environments. And I know people have been asking for that. So Absolutely. congratulations on delivering that with this latest update. Um, In-field firmware updates and in-office mm -hmm. firmware updates. Cover both a little bit. I know that for some people that's been uh, you know, a pain point yep. for, for all manufacturers um, in the sense that when a patient comes in, the good news is there's a firmware update available. The bad news is you end up having to get a cup of coffee mm -hmm. and maybe engage in more small talk yep. than you're comfortable with knowing how busy everyone's schedule is. Talk yeah, about that. Absolutely. So this is one that we're super excited about on the Starkey engineering side. And, you know, you, you alluded to it in, in our uh, fitting software conversation about, you know, Inspire and, and why we have to make the, the switch over to a new, new architecture. This is one of those core reasons why is, you know, there comes a point in time where you're building on something that's 15 years old, software gets outdated just like everything else. You know, there's, there's improvements that the engineers make and they figured out how to make this much, much faster with our new architecture. Mm -hmm. So as a hearing care professional, what you're going to find is for your patients that you, you know, maybe you want to have a, a patient come back to the office for this, this update to uh, let's just say, give them a, a, a more detailed tour of the new features and functionality, mm -hmm. you're going to expect three to four minutes. And That's remarkable. It's a binaural. A binaural. binaural yeah. Yep. Using, using NoLink wireless programmers. Yep. You're going to expect three to four minutes, and those things are going to be fully updated with this, new, with this new firmware. And that's solely because of our you know, architecture decision to move to this new ProFit platform. Mm -hmm. Now, the other option you have as a hearing care professional you know, so let's just say you have a patient who's maybe a little more technologically savvy. They're able to do some of these things easily on their own. They can do it all by themselves on the mobile application. So it's great. I've done Star it Key, and it works it's, seamlessly. It, it is. It's really awesome. So you'll get a little you'll get a little uh, notification bubble from our MyStarkey app. It says, you know, hey, I have a you have a new set of uh, or a new firmware that's available for your hearing aids. Do you want to update? 
you click yes. We do something called a uh, dual firmware image load. So in the background, it loads it all up, installs it on your hearing aids. It works flawlessly. And it's, it's literally between one and three minutes right now from yeah. a speed standpoint, you know, depending on the quality of the connection and, and those sorts of, of things. So. I can tell you I've done it a couple times uh, myself on my own devices, and it's been a couple minutes for yep. a binaural set. It's awesome. And I think this is truly, and we talk about the transition from the traditional generation to the boomers. And as a boomer, um, it's comforting to me to know that although hearing aids still, you know, it, it did, with all the improvements and all of the reliability and quality improvements, ultimately, you know, hearing aids, the components and uh, not only become obsolete by new technology, but they break down. Mm -hmm. But if I know over the five to six years that I expect these devices to be functioning, that I can stay current or more current yep. on the feature set that is allowed um, is you know, a nice peace of mind for me that to know that throughout the life of the hearing aids, they're going to be performing at their best possible uh, function throughout that entire life. Oh, absolutely. I would say in today's day and age, with the speed and in, in the in the the rapidity at which our you know sound quality algorithms mm -hmm. are advancing, like we just we just talked about DNN. You know, you bought your Genesis hearing aids six months ago we're pushing out a new firmware update yeah. that's going to make those sound even better. Right. So that's just, that's, that's right. amazing. And we're not going to be pushing these out as often as the smartphone manufacturers no. do. It yeah. seems like every other day I'm right. doing an update. Right. So, so clinicians don't need to worry about that aspect, but when there is an improvement in the DNN algorithms, your patients with confidence mm -hmm. um, know that they're getting the updated settings, either in the comfort of their own home through the app or in the office with right. the professional, depending right. upon how they want to manage exactly. this. And that's, um, it's really up to them. It, that's, that's exactly it. We, we want to give the professional the, the tools and the ability to, you know, if you want to counsel your patient to do it on, the, on their own, great. If you want to do it yourself and have them come into the office, you know, you're, you're, the, uh, you're, you're in charge. They'll, they'll likely uh, do whatever you, you tell them when it comes to those, those hearing aids. So. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, chock full of improvements. And I'd be remiss, we're nearing the end of our time, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that September is Healthy Aging Month. And really, Healthy Aging Month uh, shines a light on the fact that uh, people, you know, we say hearing care is health care. And really looking at every age in our life cycle, wanting to live as healthy as possible, including how hearing connects to the other comorbid conditions mm -hmm. and overall health and wellness. We've led the industry in this area since 2018, when we were the first with Livio AI to introduce embedded sensors and hearing aids that can track physical activity and social engagement. Talk a little bit more about how it is that Starkey views mm -hmm. this and you and your role yeah. with uh, director of product management, how it is that you're taking this and without giving away uh, uh, too much about the future, talk a little bit about how that resonates with your role and our company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, Dave. So the, the way that I view it as a as product manager is we have two amazing opportunities to help uh, hearing aid wearers in more than just helping them here, right? So mm -hmm. we have physical aspects, which you mentioned with fall. You know, you, you already said Starkey with our with our uh, sensors is is kind of the first and only company who's who's tracking uh, falls and, and yeah. actually sending life saving alerts. And then the other side of it is the the cognitive side. Yeah. So by tapping into the the uniqueness of where the hearing aid is on the body, being able to uh, help patients and, and help hearing aid wearers in both of those uh, aspects, it's, it's really, it's really an amazing opportunity. Really exciting developments. Totally. And, you know, embedded within uh, a Healthy Aging Month, uh, September 18th through this uh, 22nd, is Fall Prevention Week. First day of fall is the 23rd. Mm -hmm. So we want to avoid that first day of fall. And, and so your point about really a fall detection mm -hmm. feature is fantastic and really provides peace of mind to family members and hearing aid wearers alike. But a fall is already too late if yep. it resulted in a broken hip and often the downward health spiral. Yep. So, uh, you know, I think it's great that you have within your vision that this is going to be something we continue to work on, hopefully mm -hmm. with the goal of preventing a fall before a fall occurs. You mentioned um, the connection to cognition mm -hmm. and overall uh, cognitive health. Um, just uh, earlier, just a, a month or two ago, 
the initial findings from the ACHIEVE study that looked at patients who were elderly, who had hearing loss, um, and were either fitted or not fitted with amplification, showed what may have initially been a little disappointment, disappointing to those of us in the industry where not everyone who f- mm-hmm. fit that bill benefited in terms of cognitive function or decline yep. um, compared with the control group. But importantly, and central to Starkey's technology, was that those at elevated risk of cardiovascular disease, hypertension, diabetes, Mm -hmm. they reduced cognitive decline by 48% relative to the control population. And embedded in those sensors, in addition to fall detection and social engagement, is steps, physical activity, exercise, and getting up and moving around for musculoskeletal strength. If people are more physically active, they're going to improve their overall cardiovascular fitness as well as their social engagement because they're getting out and about more. So, you know, this finding, and we're going to hear more about the ACHIEVE studies moving forward, but it's central to the way that we've and you've been Mm -hmm. envisioning this uh, 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 technology developing over the last five years because hearing care is healthcare. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... Hear better, live better, right? Yeah. That's our that's our uh, that's that's that, that's our motto here at Starkey, and and we definitely stand behind that and believe that. So from a from a you know cognition side of it, what we're doing, you know, we're we're doing a few things on the I'll say on the mobile app, and then also the caregiver side, mm-hmm. where we're you know proactively pushing out some insights, maybe some notifications. You'll see on your My Starkey app where we're telling you like, hey, you met your you met your daily your or your your week's walking goal. Uh, great work, or yeah. even things as, as simple as, as usage and interaction. So we're able to we're able to let you know, you know, you use your hearing aids a, a recommended amount this week. Great work, or you know, maybe you had a, you had a rough week for whatever reason and and you weren't able to wear them that much. We'll provide some additional encouragement for you to to use those things more because of all those benefits that we know about that, that you just went through, Dave. Yeah, and as you said, it really assists the patient and provides peace of mind for their family members Absolutely. and their loved ones. Absolutely. So, well, we are out of time. And so, uh, you know, I know that many of uh, the people listening to the Starkey Soundbites podcast are professionals. And so I think you've provided a lot of tips and teasing a little bit about what's coming very shortly um, and really fleshing out the Genesis AI portfolio Uh, is exciting. And and I know that they're going to want to get this on their patients as quickly as they can. I think as well, we have some consumers that listen. Mm -hmm. I've heard from in the past, consumers that listened and became interested in Genesis AI. And I think the features you've talked about provided both professionals and end users with optimism for the way that they can hear better and live better, as you said so well just a minute ago. So for those of you who are listening, Uh, We hope that you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, like it, share it with your friends, your network, someone who has hearing loss. Um, And as well, we want to hear from you. If you send us an email at soundbites at starkey.com about future topics so we can bring bring Nate back or bring other experts on our team to talk about issues that are of concern to you. So until that time, Nate, I thank you again for being with us here today. It's been a pleasure uh, having this conversation. We look forward to seeing and hearing from our audience again in the near future. Thanks, everybody.